Well, welcome once again to Voice of Reason Radio. Your host, Chris Honholt and Richard Story, joining you on, wow, February 19th of 2021. You know, this month and a half went a lot faster than well, this time last year, because I'm pretty sure this time last year we had already gone through about five years of 2020. So <laughs> we're moving a little bit more breakneck pace this go, go around. And uh, we're just grateful to have you guys with us. And, uh, you know, it's we appreciate you being a little bit patient with us, especially as I just jerk the headset off my head and, you know, <laughs> try to plug everything back in so I can hear Rich. Um, and we appreciate your patience with us uh, when we had to throw up a, an unexpected rerun last week. Uh, and uh, we're grateful that you, you guys still listened. I, I, I just amazes me that you guys, even when we throw up reruns, you guys will automatically download those and still listen to them. Uh, thank you for doing that. It's such a blessing for you guys. But thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you for joining us on this program. Uh, coming up on almost five years. April will make it five years. And, oh, you know, Rich, I did not tell you this. I should have told you this in pre-show. So we're coming up on five years, right? Correct. Okay. A listener of the program... And no, Andrew did not do this. I'm actually, I, I'd, li I'd like to blame him, but I can't blame him. Andrew did not do this. A listener of the program contacted Striving for Eternity. And Rich, you and I got to figure out how we're going to do this. But we, they, for our program, have, through Striving for Eternity, donated five copies of each of Andrew's two books. Wh uh, what they believe and what we believe. So coming up on five years, uh, when we in April, we're going to have some kind of giveaway we're not sure how to do that yet we'll probably during the next month we will we'll put some kind of giveaway process together and when we get to april we'll uh we'll we'll, we'll let you guys in on that uh, on that little contest but uh yeah we have we have five copies of both of andrew's books to give away uh so for the one who did that you know who you are i was not allowed to know who you are so you didn't get dimed out Andrew, you and I got to talk later. Um, <laughs> but we, that was such a generous gift, such a generous gift from somebody. And, uh, and, and I don't know if y'all are wanting to partake of this. I did ask it online, but I've also had another request uh, from another listener wanting to know if we have a Patreon because they want to support the show. Now, Rich, you and I have always kind of made it a point. We didn't ever ask anybody to do that. Okay, that's just something we just have never asked anybody to do. But this was a rather adamant suggestion. <laughs> was almost afraid to say, <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, but anyway, so we will put it to you folks. Um, I did put it out there. Some of you did respond positively, but I, it's social media is weird. And so not everybody sees anything. If you, because we don't like asking for people to contribute. It, it's, this is, that's not what we do this for. But... Because I was insistently asked to put this out there. Um, if you guys would be interested in doing some kind of Patreon crowdfunding for the program, um, which would be going to things like keeping it up, paying for the Podbean bill, paying for the website bill, and you know, doing things like getting books that we could do for giveaways. Because believe me, we do not want to make money off this. That's not what this is about. This would be everything would be for putting back. If you are interested, just let us know. Voice of Reason Radio at gmail.com. And that's the only time I'm bringing it up. That's it. I'm never going to mention it again. If y'all want us to do it, you let us know. If you want to contribute, then we'll let we'll let you guys decide that. End of story. That's it. Not bringing it. Not going to discuss it anymore. Okay. So those two things. Now. The uh, other thing, just to remind you all, we are part of the Christian podcast community. Okay, fantastic group of brethren who have just tons of podcasts, at least half of which are Andrews. <laughs> but um, you're always going to find great podcasting material on Christian podcast community. You don't have to just listen to us. You yeah, like that really happens. Um, but there's a, there's really good shows on there. In fact, um, the one that that they did for Apologetics Live last night, I think like nine or ten of uh, 
the brethren that uh, involved in apologetics and connected to Striving for Eternity or Christian Podcast Community on an- with Andrew because they had their hundredth episode. Go go check that out. Even if you used to subscribe to nothing else, go to the Apologetics Live on Christian Podcast Community, download and listen to the hundredth episode for Apologetics Live. It was a great show, and Matt Slick out slicked Andrew. It took him nine years, but he got him. He got him good in the middle of the show. For that reason alone, you guys got to tune in and listen to it. So go check out Christian Podcast Community. Uh, you, if you go to our site, slavetothekeng.com, you can, if you click on the, you know, the banner or the, the little icon where it says, you know, award-winning episode uh, for 20, nine, yeah, 2019. I keep forgetting what year it is because 2020 has warped my brain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so for 2019 it will actually take you to the uh, christian podcast community page and from there you can navigate and find the shows and find the stuff you want to listen to go please go check that out so ah, i always forget to do that i always always forget to bring all that up at the beginning of the show so i tried to do that this time <laughs> so got the big deep breath out of the way got those those things out of the way so as i always ask you this uh you know every week rich how you doing brother <laughs> Well, it's definitely been a different type of week. It's been a bit bizarre, um, <laughs> unless you're living in a cave with no internet and no television. <laughs> the southeast has been covered in ice and snow and massive power outages in Texas and about well, every other state, and including my own, my own state. And if you live in um, one of those states, you may not have internet right now. <laughs> <laughs> you may not. Some of our some of our family, they were a couple of days without powder. Power powder. There's still powder outside on the ground <laughs> without power. But thankfully, um, as the last we heard, everyone's power had been restored. And now, as as the local weather people have put it, we're in the meltdown. But tonight's weather is probably going to be the absolute worst. Oh my! Of the entire week because everything has melted, and they're issuing black ice alerts just all over. Oh my goodness! This portion of the state, and basically all week, the law enforcement, state law enforcement, county, cities, everybody, they've been pleading with people to stay off the roads. But I think they tripled down on those efforts tonight because the black ice is expected to be so bad. Um, every area had different totals. We here at my house we had a mixture of freezing rain, sleet, and snow, and it's probably six to eight inches deep in the yard now. Oh goodness! And the the road the road in front of my home it's still just completely white. Now the four lane not far from my house it looks clear, but everything that melted and any spot that's damp we're getting down to like eighteen tonight. So all of that's just going to freeze and be like glass. Oh and, man. You know, uh, uh, of course, there's been, you know, multiple reports of accidents and people sliding off in ditches and all of that type of thing. I watched a car this afternoon in front of my house on our our little local road. They were just creeping along, and all of a sudden they hit a spot, and they would just sit there spinning, and they eventually got it out of the little spot to where the tires couldn't grip, and they managed to keep going along, so... You know, it's just been, for people that's actually ventured out, it's been a slow go, other than underestimating, or I should say overestimating, the thickness of our ice and the hardness of what I saw in my yard. <laughs> I've stayed I've stayed nice and warm and dry inside, other than when I attempted to cross what I thought was <laughs> ice in my wheelchair, and I made it about four feet, and it just sank down into the slush and I just sat there and, and was spinning. <laughs> um, to, actually tonight or maybe tomorrow night, my, one of my children, well, I shouldn't say children cause all my children are grown, but my youngest son will be home and everything will be froze over again and nice and slick. So I'm thinking seriously about grabbing a couple of snowboards, attaching them to the wheels on my wheelchair and letting him pull me around the yard and up and down the highway because I've been 
bound and determined to get out there and and slide and ice skate in my wheelchair but the attempt did not go quite as planned and i think michelle leslie has been waiting and rooting wanting to see me slide around in my wheelchair either that or she's hoping for a massive blooper reel of me slipping and <laughs> falling out and sliding down the road well i i still contend this your, your wheelchair sinking was god's provision to keep you from getting your, your full neck hurt that's just my opinion <laughs> Well, that, that's that's a great possibility. Um, one one thing, what you said earlier, I actually think this time last year, we were still joking and laughing about this toilet paper shortage yeah. because the rest of the you know that was out on the west coast. But I think it was probably March or April before the shortages and all that actually hit everywhere. So um, you know, this time last year. I don't think anyone was taking what was going on overseas as serious as it ended up being yeah. as far as the shutdowns and whatnot. But it was definitely a bizarre year all the way around. And yeah. 21 is shaping different. up to be as weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But all that aside, you know, my weeks are generally bizarre anyway. This week I just added <laughs> sub-freezing temperatures and, you know, I live in central Mississippi and it's not, it's very rare for us to have high or lows at night in single digits and sub-zero wind chills. One thing I will share that was just bizarre, I've lived in Mississippi about 18 or 19 years and I've never seen this before. The front side of our home was just covered in a layer of ice. We have siding on our home, and you go up to it, and it was just like a solid sheet of ice. And that was just strange because each little rung of, of siding had little icicles hanging off of it. And I guess it was from where the freezing rain was blowing up against the house. Oh, my. But it was. It was just a solid sheet of ice on the front of the, hum- front of the house. It was just bizarre looking, especially considering where I currently live in central Mississippi, you know. Once every couple of years, we might have a light dusting of snow, but as long as we've lived here, I've never seen what we've got on the ground right now. I've lived all over the South and up in Northern Kentucky and, you know, um, back in my younger adventuring, exploring days, you know, I'd spent three or four months in Antarctica. I had some experience with ice because of all of that and survival training and whatnot, but most people in the South, I know we have a lot of Northern friends that have been laughing and making fun of people <laughs> in the South because they honestly don't know how to drive on this stuff because they're not used to having to drive on it. But I have seen and heard stories this go around that makes me wonder how, and I don't mean to be ugly, but makes me wonder how some of these people get around when it's dry, much less when there's two inches of ice on on the roads and everything else because... One person, there's a, a town not far from where I live that has like a, a city park and it's got a pond in it. Well, this gentleman decided that he was going to skate across the pond. He got about <laughs> halfway out and the ice fell in up under him and they oh, had to go God. rescue him out of the middle of the frozen pond. Oh, my goodness. And it's like, okay, yes, the top layer that's frozen, but it's not but <laughs> about an inch thick, you know, and it's just one of those, you know, people living down south are not used to this type of yep. temperature extreme in the winter. You know, we're used to heat index of 115 degrees and being a, <laughs> and you walk outside and you're instantly drenched in sweat. So when it, when it comes to this extreme cold, people in the south are not accustomed to it. But I will say this, it was what we've got on the ground in these temperatures was greatly needed because it should do a lot to help curb the amount of mosquitoes fleas and ticks that we normally deal with in the spring and the summer <laughs> sheesh yeah no that's a good point that's a good point that's but, that's pretty um, rough man it's, i would say that's a pretty <laughs> rough week it was a bit milder for us work is insane and other things but yeah not not nearly as crazy as what you y'all are dealing with for sure <laughs> well uh, i've actually enjoyed it because with things associated with my disabilities i actually do better in extremely 
low humidity, low dew points, and low temperatures. So, and and from my perspective, I've been I've really enjoyed this week because I didn't have to get out and, and try to go and try to work in it, and none of my family did. Right. You know, we we have a lot of family and a lot of friends that are in law enforcement and the first responder family and family that's linemen that's actually have have had to be out you know repairing the power lines and everything but for my immediate family you know they did not have to be out in it so it was rather relaxing and enjoyable and i enjoyed the pain relief that i experienced for a couple of days it was like a little vacation for me but all that aside when talking about bizarre weeks i still don't think anything <laughs> that i've encountered has been more bizarre than the week <laughs> that you have experienced yourself. Yeah, You've gee, had a very I, strange week, haven't I, you? Yeah, yeah, I have. And 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 the, the the person on the other end of the mic is partly responsible for it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like you said a minute ago, and unless you don't have internet at all, I don't know how you all don't know what's going on. But I'm going to I'm going to give you backstory. I don't know how I how did I become Dr. James White's pet project? I just want that is my question. How did this happen? I don't know. I thought it would, was going to be really really neat when James White started following me on Twitter. Did little did I know how devious this man is. And little did I know I was going to become his little pet project for his practical jokes. So I, I, even <laughs> farther remote was the thought of your partner on the podcast being in cahoots yeah. with Dr. White. Yeah. <laughs> so you and I are going to have a long talk about this. So backstory, and Kate, because apparently some of you still don't know how this started, because I've seen some comments. So December last year, um, <laughs> what ended up happening was. All y'all were sharing the meme about your your favorite, pick your favorite Christmas movies. And far too many of you were picking Elf, which is, I've never watched it, and I don't want to watch it. So what ended up happening was, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do one of those, it's, you know, you, you know, you know, the unpopular take or unpopular post hashtag. And so I posted this and I'm unpopular post. Um, never watched Elf. Have no interest in watching Elf. Never will, will late likely never watch Elf. From there, this thing took on an entirely l new life of its own. Because James White decides to say, I have crossed the bridge too far. Started threatening to make a special dividing line episode about me being a Grinch the whole nine yards. And I'm telling you, this guy... I... <laughs> You would think a man as busy as he is would not have time to do the th take this as far as he has, but he has taken this really far. And even in conversations that have zero to do with Elf, he will respond with, "Oh, by the way, Elf, that's for you." And I'm like, "Dude, why? Christmas is long gone. It's like it next year. You know, let it go." No, 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 no. What does he do? So fast forward two months with the ongoing chatter, and some of you guys are obsessed with a dude in tights, okay? I don't know what y'all find fascinating about Will Ferrell to begin with, but Will Ferrell in tights acting like t Will Ferrell. I'm Captain America. Oh, shush you. <laughs> <laughs> Different story. Stay on track. <laughs> but y'all are a little too obsessed with this movie to give me as much grief as you do. And so he posts, and this is where you come in. You, you yeah, you. Cause you're supposed to be my partner and my backup here. So James White finds on Amazon, and this I don't know eight inch stuffed doll with a pull string. That's the character of Elf, with a face that only a fallen angel in the dark, deepest darkest pit of hell could find fascinating because it's terrifying looking the eyes are scary but he finds this thing and threatens to send it to me and my buddy my partner the guy who's supposed to have my six jumps in and goes well actually his birthday's next week 
and I say, excuse me? <laughs> and so James says, okay, well, maybe I bet I could get your podcast partner to send me your address. I'm like, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Well, guess what? I, while I'm at work two days ago, uh, it, well, actually, this started, what, four days ago, James and my partner, my friend, my brother, are conspiring to send me this demon doll <laughs> in the mail. He gets in my address and apparently communicate with him over a course of a few days to the point where I'm running my tail off at work and James White is tagging me on Twitter wanting to know if my birthday present showed up. <laughs> So I get home after I realize there's like a 30 you know, notifications on Twitter about this whole thing. I come home to my family chuckling because they didn't know that James had sent this. I didn't know that James had sent this. We have been ordering other things. Something shows up in the mail. They open it and go, oh, no. So they tape it back shut. My family's chuckling <laughs> as I walk in the door. And here's this demonic elf doll. In a package waiting for me. <laughs> I stuffed him in a closet. Because I... And, and, and I don't know... James, I don't know why you're so obsessed with wanting to know what he sounds like. You can find it on t online. I'm You've seen the movie yourself. I'm sure you could quote the lines from the movie. So why you want to know what this sounds like? He has harassed me for two days. Begging me to... to and, and almost threatening me to pull the, the cord on this thing. So he can know that I've heard it. I've thrown this thing in the closet. It's come out of the closet on its own. It apparently showed up in the back of my car because I filmed a video about it and didn't know he was hanging in my back window. Um, and, and, which you all were so great, gracious to point out to me. I, I come home today. The, the dumb doll has made its way into my, into my personal bedroom and is watching James on my iPad. It, it, I, I find out later it somehow got my phone and took a selfie of itself. I, and if you saw the eyes, it's terrifying. And now, didn't, it, what? <laughs> didn't he send you a voice message? Uh, uh no, no, wait, no, duh, the let me out thing. Good on. How did it get access to Facebook? <laughs> My, I get a Facebook message in the middle of the night. Let me out. What is this? Get this doll out of my house, James. You know, it's like, ho ho wait, ho hold on. What? No, you cannot come in here. No, no, I'm recording. No, you don't get to. What are you doing? No, get, what are you? How are you even out of your box? Oh, a uh, no, you get out of here. You're not allowed to be here. Get, get out. <laughs> okay, dude. That's disgusting. You're going back in the box, and I'm taping you shut. How did you even get out of the box? Get in. Get in. This is what I've had to put up with all week. He is in. Get in there. And stay in there. You happy? He spoke. He broke in during the recording, and his demon doll got onto the show. Well, just hand him the microphone and, and let him speak. And, and let him get really close to it, really, really loud. No, I uh, stuffed him in uh, the box. <laughs> we, we, we have, many of us have started a hashtag that's been trending. Dr. White even offered his time to come on the show if you would pull <laughs> that string. I've tried blackmail. I've tried bribery. <laughs> I've tried everything I can think of, and you would not cooperate and yet here, your demon doll escapes and makes sure that that string got pulled so our listeners could hear what the little elf doll that is so cute and adorable could actually, they could hear what he had to say. I'm singing. I'm in a store. And I'm singing. Get in the box. Stay in the box. <laughs> Dang it. <sighs> that's, my, that's been my week. I've had to put up with this all week. Well, needless to say, this will be a birthday you will never forget. I don't think anybody will let me forget. I haven't been allowed to forget it since I made a comment about it in December. Well, the, the hashtag is still going around, let Buddy speak. 
I didn't have a choice, but he managed to speak for himself. And now I'm going to ship him to Antarctica. <laughs> Dr. White... Let, let him play with the penguins, huh? <laughs> exactly. Let, let, them, let him haunt their dreams. Dr. White, you are a very interesting man. <laughs> I don't know that you'll ever hear this. I have nothing but the most utmost respect and love for you, sir. <laughs> you have made this a very interesting week. And I have never in my life met a man so devoted to keep a gag alive. <laughs> Needless to say, there's going to be a reckoning. Somehow, some way, there's going to be a reckoning. But thank you. Um, you. I want to say he's generous, but I can't get that word out of my mouth because I don't think that's generous. I think that's evil. Uh, <laughs> well, look at it this way. The Lord used Dr. White to bless you with the gift of laughter. <laughs> and not only that, from comments I've seen online between Facebook and Twitter, it has blessed countless others with the gift of laughter because people have been commenting all week about how funny this is and they, they needed the break and they needed the levity that with everything going on, they needed something to laugh at. And I, I think people within our circles and ones that listen to this show with everything that's going on, it's just been a countless barrage of bad news after bad yeah. news after bad news. And, you know, we get caught up in online arguments and debates and, you know, Christians are always seen as very, like we're walking around scowling and, and uptight and no sense of humor. I think people have really enjoyed something humorous and their feeds and timelines to grant them the blessing, the blessing of laughter. And Dr. White, you have made not only Chris's week, but you've made my week as well, because <laughs> this has been absolutely hilarious. And I sincerely thank you for blessing all of us with this gift and the laughter, because I know Chris has had a rough couple of weeks. I have, and many, many of our brothers and sisters have as well. And your 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 very kind gesture, even though Chris <laughs> does not acknowledge it as a kind gesture, has been very much appreciated by everyone that's been exposed to it. But I think for me, what's more hilarious than anything else, of all the pastors and preachers and speakers and apologetics teachers and professors, everyone that you and I are familiar with. The fact that Dr. James White is the one behind this gag is just extremely hilarious because I don't think most people realize what a sense of humor Dr. White actually is. <laughs> well, like I said, there is a certain amount of deviousness to this man. <laughs> There's, you know, I, I, I will say when it, when it uh, is as as intelligent and well thought out as he is when he wants to put that into application to get you on something he's going to make it happen and it, it's i will say it's better to be on this side of his crosshairs than say like on the uh, on a very special dividing line episode crosshairs <laughs> i will take this over that any day um wow <laughs> I don't know how well, I became his prep project, but wow. <laughs> well, well, brother, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say this is the end of it, and I'm not going to say this is not the end of it. <laughs> but just keep in mind, you know me very, very, very well. Now, my mind combined with Dr. White's <laughs> mind when it comes to this should terrify you. Oh, why do you think I have... I woke up at 3.30 this morning and couldn't get back to sleep. Why do you think that is? <laughs> Surely not because of Dr. White and I. Uh, it j j you know, just uh, it maybe a little anxiety as to what's coming next. <laughs> the, t the two of you plotting against me terrifies me, okay? <laughs> I, I may or may not have recruited people in your own home to help. <laughs> I'm telling you, this was weird. This was just weird. Uh. And I, I have caught grief over this. <laughs> My wife has been has been basically scolding me all week for torturing and and just 
putting you through, you know, everything that you've gone through. And she keeps telling me, you need to leave Chris alone. You need to quit torturing him. You need to, you're going to cause him to lose his mind. And I'm like, who, me? I haven't done anything. I will say that you can't lose something that was already gone a while ago. So um, my mind's been shot for a few years now. So if you haven't, if you've been listening to the show, you already know that. So Suzanne, don't worry about it. I'm already insane. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this, and this is going to make Andrew mad. I actually think this is even more devious than anything Andrew's pulled on me so far. Because Andrew, you know, he, he, he tells you what's coming. James White has been like doing this for weeks upon weeks and just did not give me any indication until stuff started until you two plotted. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? So he is like, he's the, he's one of those guys when they say, be careful of the quiet ones. <laughs> you know, you, you don't think he's going to be the guy to pull something like that. And then he does. So <laughs> you got you to watch out for this guy. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> look at it this way. Imagine what would happen if you were not liked, loved, and appreciated. <laughs> well, as so, as somebody else pointed out, it, you know, better it's you know it, you know. Just remember, this is because he likes you. <laughs> you know, I do not want to be on the side where he goes. Um, we need to have a talk about this individual because <laughs> that's that's when you just pack it up and you go home. Because the day you end up on a dividing line episode as not being joked about. You just pack it in. You're done. Yeah, you're just done. You're going to be dismantled. Um, thankfully, he has never taken one of our episodes and say we're going to go through this spot line by line. Because the day that happens, I'm packing it up. I'm finding that deserted island, and I ain't ever showing my face again. <laughs> well, if if our listeners have not figured it out, tonight's episode is all <laughs> levity. There, there's no going to. We're not going to be examining or or going into a deep discussion. Tonight's episode after this week was is purposely basically all banner and just lighthearted discussion and pointing you back to laughter as a blessing from the Lord. Um, before we go any, I tell you what, before we go any further, just so that the listeners know, actually pick up buddy and pull his string and just let everyone know that you're actually there and you're pulling the string yourself. And it's not, your demon possessed doll coming to life. I had to fight him to get him in the box. <laughs> I'm not kicking him back out. <laughs> he had to throw him in there. I'm not fighting him to get, you know, I let him back out and we don't know what's going to happen in here. <laughs> well, it would make for interesting listening. <laughs> no, he can stay in solitary confinement until I find a place to ship him. He's not coming back out. He's staying in there. <laughs> I'm telling you, that thing is creepy. The, the, the eyes on that thing are terrifying. Okay? If you doubt me, go look at my face, my Twitter page where there's the selfie face of him. Those eyes, like, stare through your soul. Okay? <laughs> that doll is creepy. Uh, Will uh, Ferrell's you, a strange-looking man. That doll is creepy. <laughs> well, you, you've got to um, satisfy my OCD. You've only done it twice. It needs to be a third time so it will be ended on an even number. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, see, now you just now I no nah, no 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 no. No. <laughs> the fact that you even said that scares me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I, folks, this uh, in all honesty, is it? I hope this has been entertaining for you this week. I didn't know what to make of what was coming, and it's. I, I, I'm still terrified at what yet may be around the corner. Um, but you know what? I, I will say, brother, this is one of those things where it would, as much as we contend for the faith, and we want to deal with very important issues. Man, we've got to do this for one another. And, and I'm not talking about sending demonic, demon possessed toys in the mail. Please don't do that. But <laughs> um, we've got to lift each other up. And, and and sometimes I think one of the best ways we can do that is just helping to make one another smile. I mean, God gave us humor. He gave us laughter. 
and, and, and there there is a legitimate place for that in our lives. Um, pastor, please don't do that from the pulpit. Uh, the, <laughs> there, there might be a turn of a phrase that's funny and makes a point, but please don't turn your pulpit into a you know comedy act. But we can do these kind of things for one another, and especially at a time when there is so much going on. I think we don't need to walk around like we all just ate a lemon. You know, it's <laughs> just being able to lift one another up to make each other laugh, to bring a little bit of joy and levity into and into each other's lives. I mean, why, why would we not want to do that for one another? You know, um, and, and, and I'm grateful that this particular ongoing gag is, has actually been something that's made people chuckle. I mean, it's, it was, <laughs> I, I, I will admit I am not, easily engaged in these type of things um as, just because i tend to be a fairly straight laced person now i can i can be kind of a you know a you know comedic when i feel the need to be you know, sarcasm is kind of my like my primary language but it's i have a hard time getting into this kind of stuff and so for me, this was actually very much out of my comfort zone. <laughs> but the fact that it did bring some joy into people's lives, uh, even for a moment, you know, I, I, I'm great, grateful that we were able to do that this week. Well, and that's the thing, you know, as we grow and learn as Christians and we listen to sermons and, and study the Bible, I think more times than not, we overlook some of the blessings that the Lord provides, and laughter is a blessing. I mean, look at Proverbs seventeen twenty two, and it says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And I looked, and depending on which Bible version you're looking at, when it comes to laughter, it's referenced like 20 to 40 times in the Bible. Now, granted, it's in different at each, you know, each one's a, in a bit of a different context, but still, you know, and even in Ecclesiastes, it says in chapter 3, verse 4, there's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. But in today's world, we don't see much laughter or dancing or singing, singing in praise to the Lord for the times when something like this comes along, you know, it seems like our norm today is just try to struggle through that day. And we only reach out to the Lord when we need help or someone suffering or sick instead of seeking as what I've been reading and studying in Matthew six, verse 33, I think it is when we pray, we should be praying for the blessings of the Lord. We should be praying to be kingdom minded because Jesus said, when it comes to, food, shelter, and clothing, our Father knows that we need these things, but seek first the kingdom of the Lord. And that has a lot of different meanings and applications as far as what we are to be seeking. But how many times do we ever discuss the fact that we're actually seeking joy, we're seeking laughter, we're seeking a light heart? And the old phrase that I'm sure everyone is, a, is accustomed to Laughter is the best medicine. Actually, that is based on that scripture verse. Now, granted, it was, let me see if I can find my note here. The origins of that was actually in the 1300s, in the 1300s by a professor of surgery. His name, and I'm going to butcher this, but his name is Henry de Mondeville. He was a, um, he propagated the post-operative therapy with humor. In other words, part of his treatment for people coming out of surgery was humor to make them laugh. And Norman Cousins, a journalist and a professor, also initiated this trend when he developed his own treatment based on mood elevation through laughter. Um, it's been scientifically proven that laughter releases endorphins. It helps build your immune system. Laughter actually is truly a great medicine, and that is a gift from the Lord that he grants to us. And I know in today's time and what we see going on around us that, you know, a lot of times it's hard to focus on laughter. It's hard to focus on joy, but 
as with many blessings that the Lord grants us, we don't need to neglect that any more so than trying to, you know, combat against heresy. We need to take time to seek things to be glad in, to rejoice in, and even things to laugh laugh within and laugh about and laugh during. Yeah. Um, have you ever noticed any of this? Yeah, no, I absolutely. I mean, think about the stuff that's been going on this week. I mean, we got the the article that that came out, and I know the guys um, from uh, Matter of Theology and Andrew got together on his uh, webcast and, did, and and talked about uh, Pastor James Coates who, from Grace Life Church in Alberta, who's been jailed because he's continued to hold services. I mean, that that kind of stuff is heavy on us. It weighs heavy on us. Uh, we all heard about Vody Balcom, who's dealing with a heart failure, and everybody was panicked and praying because here's Vody trying to get from Johannesburg all the way to the United States. Flight, you know, the weather you guys are all dealing with down there, affecting Texas too, and and couldn't get out when he was supposed to, and barely makes it in by the skin of his teeth to Mayo Clinic in in Florida, and they put him straight into the ER because he was in bad shape, and now they're moving forward, um, trying to you know, no longer just, you know, be on the defense, keeping him from dying, but now they're trying to find out what's the problem and going after it. Um, praise God for that, by the way. But we, we see those kind of things going on. And I mean, it weighs heavy, I mean, extremely heavy. You got people in a, it, right now in a foreign government in Canada, jailing a pastor because he wants to continue to minister to his people as he is commanded by scripture to, to do, you know, the, the government saying, no, 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 you don't get to do, do it that way. We tell you how to do it. And he's like, no, God tells me how to do it. And I can't not do this. I am bound by my oath to God to preach and, and bring these people together. And the amount of insult and injury from even the Christian community against this pastor has been absolutely insane. And we look at that and we just want to be some days crushed by it. And it's important. Don't don't misunderstand me. It's important that we know about that. And by the way, pray for Pastor James Coates. Pray for his family. Pray for his church. Pray that God would remove these wicked and evil leaders from office that are, are, are going after this pastor for doing what he's supposed to do. And by the way, if you're one of those people that says this isn't persecution, he's breaking the law. <sighs> if the government tells you to disobey God, that is not a law we are commanded to obey. Okay? God tells us that we are not to forsake the gathering of the brethren. And that means actually gathering, by the way. It means gathering. It doesn't mean watching a live stream. It means gathering. And if a pastor believes that that is his duty and that the government cannot infringe upon that because the government cannot command him to disobey God and the government says, too bad, you have to do it. You have to do, the, you know, do it the way we tell you. That's called persecution, folks. That's called persecution. I'd like to add something, brother. Yeah. Um, in, in, in the context of what you just said, look at the book of Acts when it mm -hmm. talks about when... Paul went into Philippi, and they jailed him, and him and Silas were sitting there singing psalms and hymns, and the jailer obviously was listening, because when everyone's bonds were loosened and the doors came open, you know, the jailer was about to kill himself, and Paul said, don't harm yourself, we're all here. During persecution, a lot of times, that's when the Lord uses yep. men to proclaim the gospel and uses that persecution to bring people to salvation. And yes, we need to pray for Pastor Coates' release because there's precedent in that because when Peter was jailed, the saints were praying for his release and the, and the Lord sent an angel and brought him out of the prison. But also, we need to pray that during the course of Pastor Coates' jail, jailing or imprisonment, we grant. We pray that the Lord grant him faith and boldness to be proclaiming the gospel, 
in that situation and grant him strength to to stand firm on God's word because throughout the book of Acts, um, when the apostles were arrested and put in jail and the Lord freed them and the religious leaders beat them and set them free again, you know, they counted it as counted it as joy to have been countered, counter, counted worthy to suffer for Christ. And, you know, we're not crazy and want to and sit around and want to have to suffer, but we need to realize that when we suffering, when we are suffering for Christ, that that in itself is a blessing because the apostles looked at it as such. And, we, and during the course of that, we need to be faithful to the Word of God and proclaim His gospel and rejoice that we are counted worthy to suffer for Christ because Christ told us that we would suffer on account of Him. Yeah. But I think a lot of people that have reacted towards the situation with Pastor Coates that are quote-unquote Christian, honestly, I think part of the backlash is the fact that they're reacting out of fear Mm -hmm. because they don't want to have to suffer. They don't want to be inconvenienced. They don't want to have to go through this because I think they know in their heart they're not truly saved, and they know they have not even half a mustard seed's worth of faith to sustain them through that because I think deep down they truly understand that they're not truly saved. Yeah. And so, I mean, and let me just add one other thing for those who would say this isn't persecution. Where do you think persecution begins? I mean, do you think that persecution begins by rounding up people, throwing them in boxcars and driving them off into a concentration camp somewhere? Or does persecution start somewhere much earlier down the line? Y'all need to pick up a history book. I would really encourage you to pick up Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Look at what Hitler did to the Jews. Right? He didn't start with rounding them up and putting them in boxcars. He turned the people of Germany against the Jews and made it got people to believe these people were terrible. They were not human. They were a threat. They, you know, they were, you know, dangerous. Does, does this sound familiar? And he hey, got, brother. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I wanted to ask: Do you know of any books that break down what has happened in the United Kingdom over the last five decades? Ugh. How it went from being more religious. You know, at one point it was. You know, it, it embraced a form of religious freedom versus where it's at today to where if you stand on the street corner and proclaim that homosexuality is a sin, you're going to get arrested. Have you come across any books that focus on the last five decades in England, and how it went from where it was at to the persecution and the stifling of biblical truth that it embraces today, just like in Canada? You Have know, you come across any books that address how that morph, morphosis, metamorphosis came about? I, I have not. Um, I know there are folks that have followed church history you know, who, if you look at like what Dustin Binge and um, Nate Pickowitz did when they did their books on you know, the, you know, uh, the American Puritans and, and how things were changing in England just with the state church and eventually the Puritans coming over to America. Even back then you had the state running the church and that, and and dictating to Christians how they would practice the faith and how they would preach. And I mean, John Bunyan was put into prison because he was not authorized by the state to preach. By the way, that's a, you know, for those of you who say, well, Pastor James Coates sh- shouldn't have been preaching in his pulpit and bringing people into the church. That's a Romans 13 issue. John Bunyan, you know, Pilgrim's Progress, he wasn't authorized by the state to preach. He wasn't j- jailed specifically for his messages. He was jailed because he wouldn't come in alignment with the state dictation of how the church was to operate. So, he, uh, you know, if you look at some of the church history, in the from the from those periods, I think you see the foundation that was laid 
to eventually where the state was the one who could tell you what to believe and what to practice and what to say. And over time, as more secularization was accepted, you know, and you know, you post Darwinian era and, and evolution and molecules demand and all that stuff, and we begin to try to take a quote neutral stance, which a secular it, secularism is a religion, by the way. It is not neutral. It is a very much religion. But as England and uh, the United Kingdom began to embrace secularism, that's what I think has, that's where we ended up where they were. And now America's kind of, you know, we're finally catching up to what they've been doing across the pond for a while now. So, but um, the whole point in all of that is, is that, you know, persecution is coming. And the fact that some of you are so focused on the fear and as, as okay, to, to quote James White, you know, because we've mentioned him so much today, it's the religion of safism. You know, somebody actually responded uh, online and said, well, the church's job is to keep people safe. No, the church's job is to pro proclaim the gospel and equip people to do the work of evangelism and to be obedient to God and to, you know, to live holy lives and etc. It is not to keep people safe. That's not the job of the church. But safism has become a religion. And some of you guys are so focused on the safism, you've forgotten the actual mission of the church. And you fail to see that when they, when a pastor is doing what he's commanded by God to do and the state arrests him for it, you fail to see where that is actual persecution. And so we see these things going on. And we're kind of getting a bit off topic because it's easy to do in this particular topic. Um, but when we see these things going on, while we need to be genuinely concerned and we need to be praying for Pastor James Coates, we need to be praying for Grace Life in Alberta, we need to pray for his family and his congregation, we need to pray that those leaders would be removed from office. Um, and yes, I do believe they need to be. Yes, do I want them to get saved? you darn right I want them to get saved. Do I want them out of office? Yes, I want them gone. So we need to pray for those things. But at the same time, we cannot lose sight of the joys that God brings us in, brings into our lives. And some of those simple things of coming alongside and showing love and kindness and, and generosity to our brothers and sisters in a moment of pain can bring about a reminder that we are gods. We belong to Christ. There is a promise of better things to come. Maybe not in this life, but definitely in the life to come. And those moments can bring clarity. They can refocus us on the Christ who purchased us. And I think that is, you know, yeah, we, we've spent a good portion of the show joking about this, this elf thing. But what did that do? It took us off the the frustration and the anger and the the anxiety of what we're watching. I mean, I, I, I'm sitting here as you were talking, Rich. Somebody on Twitter shared um, Joe Biden talking about the Equality Act and urging Congress to pass it. So we're all looking at that as Christians going, wow, that's going to be the weapon they use against the church. Guarantee you it'll happen. And so, what does that want you know, cause in us? A certain amount of anxiety. Here comes that battle. We're getting, we got we're getting battle ready. But if we're always in full battle ready mode, you can get weary. You can get worn out. You need those moments of rest. And I know Andrew, by the way, by the we were talking about uh, Andrew earlier, and he, how he has multiple podcasts on Christian Podcast Community. Andrew is learning the hard way right now. If you listen to his most recent podcast, he's talking about health issues that he's had to back off and slow down and actually rest. You know that's important. You know, being a twenty four seven ready for battle you know, Bible warrior is not what we were built for. Yes, we are always to be busy about serving our master. We are to wear the armor of God. We are to stand. We are to be battle ready. Absolutely. But we have to rest. Soldiers, rest. Okay, every person who has served in the armed forces knows that if you were a leader, you had to have a rest plan for your soldiers, even in combat zones. Why? Well, they, they, they will they will crash and die if they don't get some rest. Go ahead, brother. I was going to say, and we have examples in the Bible, especially in the Gospels, after 
Christ sent the disciples out in twos and returned, he would take them aside and they would go away to a secluded place. Part of that was to rest and recuperate from what they had been out doing. I mean, we, we do have a precedent in the Bible that reinforces what you just said when it comes to, you know, there's there, just like Ecclesiastes states, there's a time for everything. Yep. You know, there's a time to be engaged in, by, in battle, but there is a time to withdraw and recuperate and rest. And we need to realize something else, too, and, and it's a little bit outside the current topic, but we have blessings that the Lord gives us here on earth that we will not have in heaven. For one thing, we will not need them in heaven because we'll be in heaven. But things here on earth, while we're visiting this planet, Lord, the Lord does provide blessings that we will not need nor be offered once in heaven, such as comfort from times of suffering, laughter and joy and things that we have discussed. I, mean, I, I haven't, I didn't research this before this popped into my head, but if you just think about it, you know, there are blessings that the Lord grants us here and now that we will not need in heaven because, you know, everything will be perfect and we will be in the presence of the Lord for eternity. And I fear a lot of the Christians overlook some of those blessings, such as laughter, such as joy, and lifting one another up and helping each other and and little things like what we've discussed tonight and hopefully this episode has brought some joy and laughter to someone listening um i find it interesting the fact that you know something kind of silly that we've been talking about and that's been ongoing this week online the number of people that have engaged in this just tells me that you know people do need a break they need something to laugh about. They need something to, you know, kind of chuckle at. If not, th this this three month old joke gag would not still be going on. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I mean, um, you know, we're coming up on our hour mark here, so we'll we'll, we'll honor your guys' time this week. Uh, but I, I agree with you. I, I think it's a really good indicator of how much we all need that rest. Uh, y you can't be afflicted from every side in some capacity. Sometimes it's our own fault. I, I will say I, I, I am one of those type of individuals that um, I tend to create some of my own fr uh, frustrations because I'm always uh, you know, looking at something and going, well, what's going to happen next? What's the, what's the next shoe to drop? And that's, that's, that's a problem that I need to work on. So sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Uh, and sometimes it's just being observant. And as stuff is hitting you, you're trying to deal with it. And then something else hits you and you're trying to deal with that. And then you're, just, then you see what else is coming and you're trying to brace for impact. We, um, we get, you know, we get beat up and we get worn out. And so these moments really, they're, they're those bright spot, those bright spots, excuse me, um, that cause us to step back and appreciate that we have a loving God who didn't, doesn't uh, expect us to be kind of the, e, you know, the, the, the spiritual Eeyores <laughs> in this, in this life, you know, we of, of all people should be most joyful because all of this should be a reminder of what's coming. You know, that, that all evil will be judged. All these wicked evildoers will be judged. Okay. Um, but that, in, in, and, and then, I'm so, excuse me, let me finish saying that the wicked will be punished, yet those in Christ will get to be with him for eternity. And no more pain, no more uh, sorrow, but just pure unadulterated joy and being in the presence of our king those moments where we can bring a little levity to one another where we can minister to one another and lift each other up where we can make each other laugh or smile where we can mend the hurting and the brokenhearted they're so important and we we don't want to get we don't want to lose that as this is going on because there, this is going to keep happening Okay, history, if it t teaches us nothing, is history likes to repeat itself. 
And so persecution comes and it gets hard and it gets difficult. And yet, can God still bring joy even in the midst of persecution? Can he bring a smile to a person's face even in the midst of full-on terrible persecution? Yes, he can. And so let's never lose that. Let's never lose that ability to bring a smile to one another's face if for no other reason than to get the, us to remember that there is something far greater that is coming. Okay? We can have, we can be battle ready. We can study the scriptures. We can pray. We can get into those apologetic conversations. We can be witnessing. We can be speaking out against the terrible evils that are coming. By all means, do it, do it, do it. But don't lose what God has given you in that in that, in that heart of yours where there is joy in abundance that you can share with others. Don't lose that. Okay? Don't get so soured up and so battle hardened that you forget that you can bring joy and, and uh, happiness even for a moment into someone's life. So Rich, as, as we're finishing up, uh, any last things you want to share with our audience? Well, uh, I had some things pulled up I was going to read, but I'll basically give a homework assignment um, kind of expanding on what you just said. As Christians, we're not ex we're, the Lord does not expect us to be stoic you know, android figures that, you know, are rigid and never laugh or smile. And if you want an example of a pastor that is known to be one of the greatest pastors in somewhat modern day times, the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, guess what? He was known for his humor. And, and that's something a lot of people don't realize. But go online and do some research about Charles Spurgeon and his humor, Charles Spurgeon and laughter. Um, I can't remember a fellow professor that was around Spurgeon a lot, but he had commented that in the presence of Spurgeon, he would laugh more in the presence of Spurgeon than he would any other time during the year. <laughs> And it, it's just amazing to, to think about Charles Spurgeon because, you know, everyone looks to him and, you know, he is considered the prince of preachers and his sermons and, and everything are studied and untold numbers of books written and everything else. But examine the humor that Spurgeon had, the laughter that Spurgeon had, Spurgeon's ability to laugh at himself um, during the times of trial and even during the downgrade controversy. Spurgeon used humor as a way to cope and deal with things that were going on around him. And it, to me, it's a pretty fascinating read when you go to digging and looking at some articles in regards to that. But I just kind of put that out there because, like I said earlier, I think a lot of times people think, well, I'm, I'm a teacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, you know, I'm a serious student, I need to be, you know, dead serious all the time. But don't overlook that blessing of laughter and joy. And even when it comes to a, a man that the Lord used, such as Charles Spurgeon, look at some of those things that he did and the fact that he made jokes. Um, someone once commented that Spurgeon joked too much from the pulpit, and he commented back that, just be thankful I didn't basically joke as much as what I wanted to. <laughs> so, I mean, he, he used humor, um, and he, he actually at times had a very sarcastic kind of humor because um, during one of the debates that was ongoing with him and the state church about baptism, it was pretty funny because he put up a, a bird bath in his backyard and called it a, I think it, it was, I forget how it was referenced, trophy of honor or something <laughs> like that, but he did it poking back at them. So, um, you know, it, it might be an aspect of Charles Spurgeon that you might be interested in, in researching and reading about because you don't hear anything about, at least I have never really come across much when it talked about the humor and the um, that personality trait that Spurgeon had, the ability to make people around him laugh. I mean, had you ever heard? Have you ever heard of that? Or? I, I've I've heard of some of it. And while you were saying that, it it it, uh, 
it made me think of uh, the line he he utters. Uh, you know, at one point, it's there are difficulties in everything except in eating pancakes, and so. <laughs> <laughs> I went and looked that up, and there's actually, I'll put this in the show notes, uh, it's from the Spurgeon Center, Spurgeon.org. It's uh, an article from September 27th, 2016, 21 fur- funniest Spurgeon quotes. And there's one here, and this, is, this tells you the kind of wit that, um, uh, that Charles Spurgeon had. It says, an agnostic once said, ah, Mr. Spurgeon, I don't agree with you about religion. I'm an agnostic. Spurgeon, Spurgeon replied, yes, agnostic is a Greek word, and the exact equivalent is ignoramus. If you like to claim that title, you are quite welcome to. <laughs> Apparently, this is from his autobiography. So, you know, that's why I say there is an appropriate place for humor, even in the pulpit. Um, I, oh, I've heard this one. After Spurgeon's baptism, his mother wrote him a letter. Ah, Charles, I have often prayed the Lord, make you, Lord to make you a Christian, but I never asked that he, you might become a Baptist. Ah, mother, Spurgeon replied, the Lord has answered your prayer with his usual bounty and giving you exceedingly abundantly above what you thought or asked or asked or thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there are there is appropriateness for humor there is appropriateness for laughter even the prince of preachers understood that so yeah i i have heard of some of these i didn't realize there was quite so many but yeah i i, I did hear about his his rather sharp wit <laughs> yeah i think if i remember the article i read it mentioned his autobiography and there was a large portion in there that covered you know his sense of humor and, and jokes and and things along those lines but i would just in closing i'd like to remind everyone do not neglect there's no small blessing from the lord i think sometimes there's just blessings that we take for granted or we overlook and maybe don't even realize it's a blessing but laughter and joy is truly a blessing from the lord so make it a point this week to try to find laughter and joy in things around you no matter what your circumstance you can find joy and laughter and no matter your circumstance, just remember it could always be far worse than what it is and set your sights on the hope that is in Christ. And while you're doing all of this, make sure to, to proclaim the gospel at least once a day. Amen. Amen. Well, folks, thank you for joining us. And just as we go, we to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Get back in the box. <laughs> You folks have a wonderful week. God bless you. We'll talk to you next time. See you then. 